Order of the day number one. The State Honourable Sector Management Bill, first reading. Mr Speaker. The Honourable Tony Ryle. Uh, Mr Speaker, I move that the State Sector Management Bill be now read a first time. Uh, at the appropriate time, Mr Speaker, I will move that the State Sector Management Bill be considered by the Education and Science Committee, that the Committee report finally to the House on or before the 24th of November 2010, and that the Committee have authority to meet at any time while the House is sitting except during oral questions, and during any evening on a day on which there has been a sitting of the House and on a Friday in a week in which there has been a sitting of the House, despite Standing Orders 187 and 1901B and C. This State Sector Management Bill is an omnibus bill providing for machinery of government changes across several sectors that have been well signalled. This bill provides for the amalgamation of the Foundation for Research Science and Technology and the Ministry of Research, Science and Technology into a new Ministry of Science and Innovation. It provides for the Minister of Research, Science and Technology to appoint boards to make independent funding decisions, and it provides for the amalgamation of the National Library and Archives New Zealand into the Department of Internal Affairs. Many state sector service agencies will not receive increases in their budget baselines for a considerable period of time, reflecting the tight economic times. At the same time, the New Zealand public's expectations of what the public service can do for them continues to rise. We expect the government sector to organise itself in a way that makes itself more accessible to New Zealanders and delivers its services more efficiently. These changes are made in that context. These amalgamations are expected to improve services within existing baselines, reduce cost in the short to medium term, and future-proof the long-term delivery of government services. And this is consistent with the government's overall direction for the state services and the government's aim of improving state service performance by removing, moving resources to support the front line. There are three parts to this bill. Part one of the bill, Mr Speaker, amalgamates the Foundation for Research, Science and Technology and the Ministry of Research, Science and Technology into a new Ministry for Science and Innovation. It abolishes the Foundation for Research, Science and Technology as a separate entity, repeals the Foundation for Research, Science and Technology Act 1990 and replaces it with a Research, Science and Technology Bill. This amalgamation addresses a number of uh, perceived weaknesses in the present fragmented system of government support for research and development and innovation. It addresses the duplication of policy advice on research, science and technology planning and prioritisation between the Ministry of Research, Science and Technology and the Foundation for Research, Science and Technology. Uh, it addresses the confusion and complexity in relation to funding programmes and streamlines those. And the bill also deals with the concerns about the long-term ability of two small agencies to retain critical skills and maintain services at the required level in a tight fiscal environment. Uh, the bill will enable the Minister to establish one or more boards to make independent decisions on proposals for the allocation of specified funding for research, science and technology. The funding decisions will be made for the purposes described in this bill in accordance with criteria that will be set and notified by the Minister in the Gazette. They will also be made on the basis of information provided to the boards by the Chief Executive of the new Ministry. The decisions must be made in an independent, fair and transparent manner and must be referred to the Chief Executive for implementation. The bill transfers the staff of Morst and Forst into the new ministry, which has been established by Order and Council. Parts two and three of the bill uh, provide for the amalgamation of the National Library and Archives New Zealand into the Department of Internal Affairs. Uh, these amalgamations recognise the increasing role that technology will play in enabling government to manage information efficiently and effectively so that New Zealanders can access information in ways that suit them. Each of these three agencies stores and provides information that is collected by government for the benefit of New Zealand and New Zealanders. 
All three are investing to deliver information online 24-7. So bringing the National Library and Archives New Zealand together with the Department of Internal Affairs will support that development with less cost and less risk. It will also provide opportunities for greater capability, economies of scale and better public access. Uh, as the Minister uh, for the National Library, Honourable Nathan Guy, has already maintained and made clear, a large number of countries maintain their services in a similar way as being proposed in this bill. In undertaking this amalgamation, the legislation has preserved the statutory roles of the National Librarian, the Chief Librarian of the Alexander Turnbull, Turnbull Library and the Chief Archivist. Part 2 amends the National Library Act of New Zealand to reflect the change of status of the National Library from a public service department to be part of the Department of Internal Affairs. It maintains the statutory role of the National Librarian and preserves the National Librarian's functions within the Department of Internal Affairs. It maintains the statutory role of the Library and Information Advisory Committee and the, guide, and the Guardian's kaitiaki of the Alexander Turnbull Library. It also continues the Alexander Turnbull Library and the functions of the Chief Librarian of the Alexander Turnbull Library, who is to be appointed by the Chief Executive of the Department of Internal Affairs on the recommendation of the National Librarian. The Bill also provides for the transfer of staff from the National Library to the Department of Internal Affairs. Part 3 amends the Public Records Act to reflect the change of status of Archives New Zealand from a public service department to be part of the Department of Internal Affairs. It maintains the statutory office of the Chief Archivist and, and preserves the constitutional role requiring the Chief Archivist to make decisions independent of the Minister and the Chief Executive of the Department of Internal Affairs in relation to the following public officers and local authorities on disposal of records, issuing standards, providing advice and monitoring compliance with the Act, and exempting a public office or local authority from compliance with a standard or instruction issued by the Chief Archivist. It also maintains the statutory role of the Archives Council and provides for transfer of staff from Archives New Zealand to the Department of Internal Affairs. It is intended that the Bill be divided into the following three separate bills at the Committee of the Whole Stage, a Research Science and Technology Bill, a National Library of New Zealand Amendment Bill and a Public Records Amendment Bill. Uh, Mr Speaker, uh, the substance of this bill has been uh, well signalled and its purpose is to streamline and improve the delivery of public services in New Zealand. Important safeguards and constitutional arrangements are maintained in order to enhance and protect the role of uh, some designated officers. And it also brings New Zealand in line with the way that a number of other jurisdictions deal with these areas. And I certainly commend the bill to the House. Members, the question is that the motion be agreed to.